Good evening, everyone. Please give it up for your slide night host, Rove McManus. Hello. Hi. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming over. That was unexpected. Hey, thanks for coming over to my place, everybody. Welcome to my slide night. Yeah, like what I've done with the place, we just re-turfed out the back. Very lovely, isn't it? Got the, the good furniture, the Barbies out. Um, you're probably thinking, oh, geez, all you celebrities all live next door to each other. We do. I've got uh, Osher Gun Gunsberg lives on that side. You may have noticed the really lovely rose bushes when you came in. Grows, grows all his own for The Bachelor, it's great. Um, Larry Emder's on that side, so if you could keep the noise down, would be really appreciated. Not that he complains, it's just if we have too much fun, he'll come over and just bloody ruin everything. He's, he's my Kramer, you might say. Now, who in the audience tonight is old enough to know what one of these is? Yeah? I did this at the matinee, it was unanimous. Hardly surprising, a group of people who would love to see a show and be home by 3 p.m. know <laughs> what? what one of these is. This is a slide, right? This is how it used to be. You take a photo, you had a one in 24 shot of getting it right. If you could find a place that could do it in an hour, that was some Harry Potter shit right there. They put it on one of these little bits of plastic, you cover it in cardboard, put it in a machine that would shine a beam of light behind it and project it up on the big screen much like I have done here. I've gone old school with a bed sheet on the clothesline. And this is how you would share your photos with people. Yeah, young people, this is how you did it. Before your Instagram, before your TikTok, your OnlyFans. <laughs> Although you do look familiar, sir. Now I know, that's, that's where I recognised you, okay. But this is how you did it. This is how you would have, you couldn't send your photos to people. They had to come to you. They, they would come to your house, right? And you would put them up and you'd have an old fashioned slide night. Now, I have discovered that these things are still readily available, right? You can find them in op shops. People have just gotten rid of them because they don't need them anymore. And you can buy them at bargain prices. Op shops, eBay, uh, I, I mug people in alleyways for them. <laughs> It's, it's a sickness, I have, I have a real problem. But I have found a whole bunch of slides and I come in, I load them up and you'd be surprised what you find. You get a bunch of random stuff, usually people's random holiday snaps. Something like this just comes up out of nowhere. <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood on her holiday after, I killed a big bad wolf, I'm going to Greece. Um, I don't know what's happening here, but I, li I like to think this is from the, the, the kangaroos holiday. Like it's, <laughs> you know. Remember when that random person came up and made me sniff their finger? I don't know what's happening in this shot. It's probably be best we move on. That, that's a stunner of a photo. How do you get, how do you get a waist that, like childbearing hips, but a waist that tiny on a man? <laughs> No wonder that car's careening off the road in the background. It's never seen anything like that before. I stumble across a lot of wedding photos. You get random wedding photos in there as well. Ones like this. Oh, that's my favourite part of a wedding when you shower the groom with uh, Pringles. It's beautiful. Uh, this one, wow. <laughs> Is that yours? Is that you seem to be very excited by that one? Uh, and uh, I don't know what this one. Right, yeah, okay. I guess what happens on the Bucks night stays on the Bucks night, right, fellas? Let's leave it at that. So who remembers going to slide nights? Anyone got any memories of going to slide night? Yes, ma'am, what do you remember from slide nights? The tick, tick, tick. Oh, of time slipping by. Or the, the bomb that you were strapped to to make you enjoy it, perhaps. That's it, it was like, it, it, was, it was a total punish most of the times going there. And usually family photos, I get a lot of random family photos when I look through mine. That this, there's a lot to unpack in this one. Like, I feel this woman here is undressing me with her eyes. 
And he's perfectly okay with it. <laughs> and then, oh. It's always that <laughs> lovely fail music, Benny. That's, it's always some idiot puts the slide in the wrong way around. Always happens, I'll flip it, fix it. Okay, that's no better, that is absolutely no better. And then this, yeah. Um, all I can say about this photo is, that is a future Gold Logie Award winning smile right there. That's it, all right. So this is how it works, right? Two things you need to know at this point. Number one, these are all very, very real slides. They have not been doctored up in any way, shape or form. And the second thing is, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So what I like to do is I get a bunch of these random slides, I put them in the machine, they just come up willy nilly and I get a bunch of mates over and we use them to make slide nights more exciting by putting them in a whole bunch of different games and get a bunch of performers, comedians, improvisers to come and play. Welcome, I'm gonna, I'll go back through. That was me, and that was, that's, that was like, oh, it's no better, but then, and then there was that one, it was upside down, and then, you know what, you'll pick it up as you go along, that's fine. And we do have the best laugher in the entire world in the room, so there's a lot to live up to. You'll pick it up as we go along. It's Larry's kids getting out of his house. Well, that's why, that's, no, you're welcome, you're welcome. So I get a bunch of mates over, I put some slides in the machine, and then we put them to use in a bunch of fun games. Does it sound like a good time to you? Yeah. Well, good, because that's all we have. <laughs> if you wanted something classier, you've come to the wrong place. All right, will you please welcome to kick things off. She's going to be playing on one team. It is Nicola Parry. Oh! <laughs> Look very uncomfortable in that chair. Yes, what's, I don't think I, I think I was desperately happy inside. What's what's on your frock there? It's a it's the wormy dress. <laughs> a worm with a I should really have called it the spermy dress. Oh yeah. The wormy dress. Oh, you're so ahead of your time. Thank you very much. Uh, joining Nicola tonight, welcome Daniel Cordeau. <laughs> Hello. I would not, I am not making fun of that kid's haircut. Look at that eye, look at the eyes. Yeah, that was uh, when I was inducted into the family. <laughs> they were, and that's my sister trying to, um, uh, you know, poke her head in the photo too. I wasn't happy. Uh, it's, it shows, mate, it shows. <laughs> Uh, rounding out their team, please welcome Bridie Connell. Hello. Hi. <coughs> Where's this taken? Uh, this is at my older brother's, I think, third or fourth birthday, and I'm obviously screaming because I would have liked to be the centre of attention. Well, you have come to the right place. <laughs> sure. Come have. And take a seat. Thank you. Competing against them, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Happy Ferrarin. <laughs> That was an award-winning smile too. That is a very award-winning yes. smile. You look like you have a, a, an entire top row of teeth and just one at the bottom in this photo. <laughs> but, oh. but I still want an award. I got a gold star from my preschool for sharing my snacks. Oh, well, I hope you brought some tonight. <laughs> Joining happy Jim Fishwick. <laughs> <laughs> there, is, there is a lot to unpack in this one. I like the... the uh, the butterfly? Is that a butterfly on the face? Yeah. It, it occurs to me that present day Jim has the fashion taste <laughs> of a three year old. Because <laughs> so I'm looking at that butterfly makeup going like, I would quite like I that right now. I would do that now. again. I would do that again. And to round out their team, please welcome Rebecca Dayuna Muno. <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> uh, my detective skills are saying uh, from the brilliantly decorated tree. Mm, mm. Is this Christmas time? It sure is. And as everyone can see, uh, my legs are dressed as Christmas hams. Uh, <laughs> and they still look like that too. Put a look at them, they are done. All right, I'll shut the gate so the dog doesn't get in. Thank you very much for coming over, everybody. All right, we've loaded up our slides. We've got our games ready. Teams, are you ready? Yeah, no. Benny, are you ready? What if I'm not? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Benny Davis, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. Woo! Oh, yeah. 
Wish you had a so seen this before the show when he was making fun of you, right? <laughs> <laughs> we also have a very special guest who'll be joining us a little bit later on. This is them. Way back in the day. <laughs> I, I don't know which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I... This, is, this could be the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I don't get to see these beforehand, and maybe that should change. <laughs> Before, let's say, our guest is coming out, and I'm about to laugh at them as a child. <laughs> well, this is the... No, it's fine. They'll be fine. All right, well, we are ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Let's get into some slide night. Let's do this thing. Okay, we're going to kick things off with a very simple game I like to call Holiday Snaps. It's very, very traditional slide night fair. You go away on a holiday, you come back with all the highlights of your trip to let all your friends know why your life is hashtag blessed. <laughs> well, we're gonna do that with Bridie, Daniel and Nicola. I have loaded up three photos, three random slides, which will be the highlights of the holiday that they have just been on. Where is it and what have they seen? Nobody knows. <laughs> Let's find out. I can't wait to see where you've been. Nor can we. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming to our slide night. <laughs> Sandra and Tina, Girls Trip 2023. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Sandra and I had decided after the year we've had that yeah. relaxation was the name of the game. R and R. We wanted a break from life. Oh! We needed a break from the boys. Oh, we did, didn't we? <laughs> we, we did. A real break. A real break. From the boys. So our first stop was probably the most relaxing place that oh, anyone could think stunning. of. Stunning. <laughs> stunning relaxation. Here we go. <laughs> well, this one was your idea, so oh, you look, it was. It. I wanted to try a new uh, facial technique involving two silver tubes and a blue bucket. Uh, I've heard that it plumps the natural collagen in the skin, so we actually sat under the blue bucket and just let it push over our faces. It was absolutely divine. It was divine. It's divine. Truly was divine. And don't you think Sandra looks terrific? <laughs> yes. Oh, stop it, stop it. Uh -huh. Yes, and of course, after that, once we were feeling very zen. Oh, we were so zen. Well, then we did what we always do. Every We've been year. wanting to do this since we were 18 years old. <laughs> we had to relive our youth. Oh, we did. And we went dancing at one of the premier nightclubs in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is the secret part. <laughs> Don't tell the boy. <laughs> we both started extramarital affairs. <laughs> oh, it was wonderful. So fun. It's all working still, which was a relief. <laughs> Oh, oh my God, I've got to find out like this. Oh. At a slide night, oh. that's when I find out what you've been doing. Oh, Trevor, I, I didn't realise that you'd snuck in. I... <laughs> How did you get up through the window, Trevor? I scaled the balcony like a man filled with passion. There's one more slide you need to show them, I think. Trevor, no, I, I don't want to. Yes, I, you do. I think you have to, to save your marriage. <laughs> it's now or never, because it's either that man there... Uh, he's talking about Dwayne. Uh, but Dwayne was so worldly. Trevor... So was Linus. <laughs> <laughs> right. Linus? He was my extramarital affair. Oh, Dwayne right. was her yes. extramarital affair. No, I'm so up. confused and jealous all at the same time. Trevor. What? Yes, I started an extramarital affair while I was away, relaxing, having a break from the humdrum oh, life life. Live. But after the era of my ways, I realised that you're the only man for me. And how did I discover this? Because... We have a child. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, darling, we have I a child. <laughs> oh. oh. What a roller coaster ride. <laughs> That's not what I expected at all. Round of applause for our performance kicking things off. And I want to reiterate, they have not seen these slides before. That's incredible. That was wonderful. Very informative, too. I love 
being informed. I love being educated. Like TED Talks. Oh, they've been allowing boring know-it-alls to just drone on about something you couldn't give a shit about since 2006. <laughs> but I like to make them interesting with a little something I call tag team TED Talks. Aha! What we're going to do is get one of our teams to give us a new TED Talk, something about the latest innovation in technology, entertainment, design, lifestyle. What is it? They don't know <laughs> until one slide will come up on the screen. They will kick off their TED Talk, pass it on down the line to the next team member and the next team member until all three have had the chance to enlighten you on their next great big idea. So why don't we get Beck, Jim and Happy up here and Yee! give us your tag team TED Talk. Who would like the power of the clicker? Thank Jim, you very much. Please, thank you very much. Oh. Good golly. <laughs> Miss Molly. These are going to be the very words that come out of your mouth sometime in the next year, five years, ten years. Because when it comes to entertainment, Miss Molly, that one doesn't work, never mind. <laughs> we have seen revolutions, we've seen 3D cinema, we've seen virtual reality. But all of those are going to seem as interesting and diverting as a child playing with a hoop and a stick once we get the next great revolution in entertainment technology, which is... <laughs> a mill that goes from town to town. Spinning stories for you. Because what is creating a story but taking inspiration from your life and grinding it into a paste? <laughs> That's what this mill is going to do. It's going to go from town to town, taking the stories of everyone in that town and grinding it into a new story. And there's one big secret behind how this works. One seemingly impossible but ingenious piece of technology that explains it all. And that is... <laughs> <laughs> that is what you see over here. The wheel. It also goes around and around and around, but it doesn't stay put. It goes forward. Because a story, when we put it all together, put all these ideas together, we spin them around. But we also need stories to move us forward. Narrative, that's what it's about. We are the stories that we become. I mean, we become the stories that we tell ourselves is what I meant with that. I was just checking. <laughs> so we have stories that are put together and stories that move us forward, 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 narrative. And that is really at the core of this technology. We didn't try and go AI or green screen. We went to the core of the story, which is ideas. These ideas follow a simple principle, the narrative principle. Narrative is an acronym, N-A-R-R-A-T-I-V-E. And that stands for... <laughs> N, never ending. A, attempts. R, R really. R, R Really? A. 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 T. The. I. Ideas. V. Vented. E. Everywhere. <laughs> what is so revolutionary about this mill story that churns stories and spits them out and moves forward, you ask? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I'll tell you. This is Jeff. <laughs> Jeff had no stories. Jeff's life is what we would call boring. What younger people may call shithouse. But thanks to our ever-moving, churning narrative story mill, 
Jeff was able to purchase a bunch of stories in small jars for only $14.95. Now every morning when Jeff wakes up, he and his wife have something to say to each other. Why only this morning he opened a jar and buttered it upon his toast and suddenly he was in World War II. (laughs) His wife the next morning took out a jar and opened it and sampled it and she now tells stories that go on and on and on and on. So when you have nothing to say, think of the mill. When you have no life, think of the story paste. (laughs) And when you write in your journal, stick in the pages of stories that you've discovered from the people from neighbouring towns. (laughs) I think this has been 25 years well spent, don't you? (laughs) Yes. Thank you. (laughs) Well. Amazing. Good golly, Miss Molly. <laughs> outstanding. I want one of them jars. <laughs> this has been very entertaining. Look, once again, thank you all very much for coming over. I love having you all here. I love having all my mates here in the backyard. There's only one thing we're missing. It's just a, a fire pit. I'd really like to have a fire pit. Yeah, I know. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I've been meant to disappoint. That, you know, I should have noticed when you came in, but that's fine. <laughs> because I, lo- I, love, I love having a, a fire pit because I love, I love, you know, Telling campfire stories in particular. Love roasting marshmallows, making s'mores. We can't have one because obviously it's a, it's a bit dangerous, what with the open flame and, and me being made from 100% synthetic material. <laughs> it's, it's all right, I, I deal with it okay. But it doesn't mean we can't have a good old fashioned campfire story. Hey! <laughs> Thanks, four people. <laughs> yeah! For the rest of you, it's going to happen anyway, so <laughs> lean in. <laughs> so let's set the scene. Even though we have, we, we, yeah, we don't have a campfire. Doesn't mean we can't set the mood. Let's, let's bring the lights down. I mean, let's bring the sunlight down <laughs> here in my backyard. Benny, can you give us a little bit of campfire music, please? Maybe? A little camp. Oh, it's very campfirey. Pan pipes. <laughs> And why don't, you, why don't you help me set the atmosphere, like the, the sound of the wind rustling in the leaves. Oh, an owl in hoots. Oh, a, fl- a flock of owls. <laughs> I hear a coyote off in the distance. <laughs> and then, and then realise I'm in Australia, so it shouldn't, <laughs> it should probably have an Australian accent, an Australian coyote. Hey, thank you. Good on you. I respect the commitment. Anyway, let's get Bridie, Daniel and Nicola up here to tell us a campfire story. Gather round, everybody. Gather round. You've got one slide to tell us your story. Take us to somewhere amazing. I can't wait to find out. Hey, kids, have you enjoyed school camp? Yeah, have you? Because it's about to change. (laughs) You so up the back, sit up, please. <laughs> Posture's even more important in the wild, Darren. It's our last night of school camp, so we thought we'd tell you a campfire story. One you won't forget this time. Something that happened last year. To the last year's school camp. Yeah, you wonder why there's no year sixes? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna tell you why. This is the tale that we like to call... <laughs> What happened to Morris? Uh. (laughs) Morris was a regular kid. 11 years old. Bit of a sook. (laughs) If I'm going to be honest, he was a bit of a sook. Yeah, he was a bit of a sook. Total sook, yeah. No no dispute in that. But despite being a bit of a sook, he had a good heart. Little Morris. He looked after his little sister. He was kind to animals. He could whistle really well. (laughs) But sometimes he would just go off on his own, wandering a little too far away from the camp. And one night... Morris was wandering. Wandering away from the camp. (laughs) 
when he saw a shadow in the bushes. <laughs> what the hell's that, thought Morris. I don't know, thought Morris back to himself. <laughs> he walked towards the bush and out sprang a kindly old lady. Now, year fives, we know about stranger danger. We know we've got to be careful, but old ladies, they're the shit. They're lovely. This old lady, she had grey hair and a floralette kind of top. There was nothing to be afraid of. She was just a run-of-the-mill, kind-looking old lady, or was she? She wasn't. Nah. <laughs> she didn't have a little boy of her own, but she wanted one. But a different kind of boy. So she took Morris and they wandered. Wandered to a... House. <laughs> a strange house with a red roof. Now, of course, when Morris didn't come back from school camp last year, his parents sounded the alarm. Because we didn't notice he'd gone missing. Nah, very little personality, Morris. Yeah, he was bland. <laughs> Morris didn't make much of an impact on anyone. No. Constantly Until... underachieving, wasn't oh, he? Oh, totally. He, he wasn't was... good at anything. He was a useless little bastard. Yeah. <laughs> but something happened to him that changed him in a most profound way. You see, the old lady not only wanted a boy, but she wanted a car. <laughs> this old lady was a transformer. <laughs> And she tra transformed the boy into a car. Whoa. Oh. Now, we're not telling you this story to inspire you to go and save Morris. Like we've said, very underwhelming boy. Not worth boy. saving at all. <laughs> He's done. But imagine if Darren, with the terrible posture up the back, was like Morris and went missing. We'd be sad. We'd miss his antics. So ask yourself, do I want to be turned into a car? <laughs> no? Well, I won't go a-wandering. <laughs> and remember, you'll end up at the bloody panel beaters if you don't behave yourselves. Dinner's at six. We'll see you at the best. Right. Oh, don't be late, you little girl. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. What a... An important life message. Don't be like Morris. <laughs> it's been great so far. I, I'm thoroughly enjoying watching everybody squirm. They set themselves off on one particular direction. Like Morris wandering and wandering in the woods. And then suddenly they see a picture with a red roof. I think it was a roof. Was it a roof? It was a roof. A roof. <laughs> and then we're all the way over there. So yeah, everyone's been doing great. It's, it's watching them think on their feet, it's incredible, or down on their knees if they're doing that as well. So to see someone, see a slide on the screen and come up with some sort of on-the-spot story, that's pretty good. But let's see how they do when I make them perform an on-the-spot song. All right, Beck, Jim and Happy, get yourselves up here. I want you to create the next great song that we're all going to be downloading later. With, of course, Benny on music, this is going to be fantastic. And your entire song is based on this. <laughs> Great. <laughs> fantastic. All right. Um, look, they look like they could be in the 50s or so something. Let's do a doo-wop song. Benny? Doo-wop. Sure. Yeah. Doo-wop. Yeah. Doo-wop. Doo-wop. Doo <laughs> oh, yeah.
shark, baby shark, shark, shark. I'm his baby, baby, baby shark. And that night, he opens his mouth wide. And he gives me a nice old bite. Listen, baby, <laughs> I don't know what could be worse, visiting a great white shark or visiting a nurse. Uh, I don't want to be too rude or get to a head, but I wouldn't mind a bit of how. Give me a doo-wop. You wouldn't know what to do with yourself. That was incredible. Welcome to your new favourite earworm, everybody. <laughs> Just be careful when you're singing that on the way out, though. I don't want a massive people going, Oh, Johnny, I want to visit a shark with you. And everyone just runs away terrified. <laughs> What's the equivalent of, like, a, uh, like a singing flash mob? You know, you get, f like... You know, the dancing flash mob, someone starts a dance and everyone's like, what this, what's this rando doing? And then everyone sort of joins in. You should totally do that with the song. Like, just one person sing it. That's the Qantas Children's Choir. Oh, that's the Children's <laughs> Choir. <laughs> I just want, like, one of you, just one of you, like, choose someone now, just, just our, our, our laughing friend. You start the song and wait till everyone around you is like, I've never heard that song before. They all get the Shazam out. And the Shazam's like, meet me, me, more, meet more, more, does not add up. <laughs> but then everyone else starts singing it as well. Well, it's every other, every, other, every other person at the opera bar is just like, oh, what? Where have I been living? <laughs> or just go home. Up to you. Whatever, whatever you, I mean, <laughs> so many options. I'm going to mix things up now. This is a game called Set the Scene. What we've been having so far is uh, the game gets started. We maybe start as a scene and then the slide comes up and sends everybody off in another direction. What we're going to be doing this time is we get one slide at the very, very start. That will be the setting for where this scene will take place and also in some respects probably dictate the characters that we will see in that scene. So let's get Bridie, Daniel and Nicola up here. Yeah! You three, this is where your scene is set. Oh. <laughs> Busily looking at all the signs, hoping right. for some type of help. <laughs> Here we go. Hey. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Where are the toilets? <laughs> I say, are you lost? <laughs> I thought you were a sign. Oh, I'm a sign of a kind. Uh, yeah, I'm looking for the toilets. I'm a sign that you're hallucinating. That you may have had a little too much fun on the weekend. Oh my god, I did. Uh-huh. I partied like you would not believe. That's why you're talking to an inanimate object like I'm real. I don't even exist except in your hallucination. Oh wow. Well, while I'm hallucinating, direction of toilet? Oh, uh, that's <laughs> over that way. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Is it over that way? Oh, thank you. No, it is over that way, actually. Oh, thank or you. Is it? This isn't a toilet. No, <gasps> it's not. 
You've reached center management offices. <laughs> A common mistake. Hi, I'm... No. Dare not to shake the hand of the head of center management. For I am a god, and all who look upon me must quake. Bow before center oh. management. Is that in my head, or is it real? Oh, you're not hallucinating now, Christina. In fact, that sign was not a hallucination either. You have reached center management, a completely different dimension to the one you thought you were in. Christina! Look Christina. behind you! <laughs> Christina! Um, I just wanted to complain about a spill in Coles. That's all. I... You just wanted to complain about me, 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 me. Spill in I just wanted to complain about the spill in Coles. Who do I talk to to help me mop up the spill in Coles? Of course I can help you. You could talk to the telephone sales office or the mini mall child minding centre or go to the bus stop perhaps. Or the Commonwealth Bank. Bank. <laughs> oh God, no, not the Commonwealth Bank. <laughs> Banking, banking. I think I'm having a breakdown. Would you like to take out a mortgage? <laughs> <laughs> what a nightmare, stop it. Oh my God. <laughs> you shouldn't have had that pink hibiscus. <laughs> when will you learn? That was amazing. All right, time to get uh, everybody up here in just a second for a little something, because we've been entertained so far, and I would like to keep the entertainment going. Like, um... <laughs> you did make it sound like it was about to stop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll do our best. Because normally at this point in the show, I would say, you've had enough entertainment. Go home. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a good crowd. So I'm going to do something special. With something I call life's a pitch. With something I call life's a pitch. You see, television, yes, it's entertaining, and also a great way for me to seek the approval of strangers to fill a, a void inside my emotional self. But mainly it's entertaining. Who has a favourite TV show? What's your favourite TV show, you? Yes, you. Daredevil. Is that even still on? The, the Netflix one? <laughs> Everyone has a favourite TV show. <laughs> whether they know it or not. <laughs> but someone has to come up with that TV show. They say we're at peak television, everybody. Everybody. But they need to, someone. They need someone somewhere to come up with that idea. They have to pitch that idea. And that is going to be Beck, Jim and Happy. Come on in. Each of you has an idea to pitch to our network executives over here. But I want each of you in the audience to be listening closely because at the end of this, you get to vote on which of these shows you think is the best idea and should be greenlit as the next big binge-worthy show that could be on Netflix or somewhere, I don't know. Thank you, yes, Doctor Who, indeed. That one already exists, but that's, no, that's good. We've moved on from the what's your favourite show bit. <laughs> but I look forward to hearing your answer to the next question in 10 minutes' time. I will give each of you one slide to act as your pitch idea. They don't know what their pitch is until they see the slide and perhaps hear what style and genre our executives are looking for. Good luck to the three of you. And remember, listen closely because you will pick our best pitch. Hi, everybody. And uh, you've got lots of uh, meetings today that you have. <laughs> You are having a great first day. Thank you. Um, I don't know why I'm Luke McGregor all of a sudden, but um, uh, thanks for coming. And, um, uh, 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 Do the, you have of, somebody for us, Luke? Is got, there somebody uh, here? Uh, three pictures to listen to. And, um, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll send the first one in if you want. To throw it out, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Hello. I've got the pitch for you that's gonna blow your pants off. <laughs> wow. I got a pitch of a show that has never been seen before. I'm not gonna tell you the name, this guy will in about four hours. <laughs> okay. Wow. wow, great, great. No, it's, a, it's an exciting show. It's full of lots of uh, stories and people and some non-people. 
That's right, I love sci-fi and I love what you've done with this alien versus human situation. Tell us all about it. Oh yes, it's the aliens versus the humans. Who will win? You decide. That's right, it's a alien versus humans reality show. Wow. Oh, wonderful. Okay, yeah, yeah I'm hey. interested. Casting has already begun on other planets, and oh. we're very happy with the aliens we have so far. So who have you got so but far? But as for the humans, we're struggling, you know. The talent, not so good. For example, the first lot of contestants we have... <laughs> we're a bunch of pansies. <sighs> Yeah. 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 Not good. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. the casting needs some work. The casting needs some work, but when we've got it, it's amazing because we're hoping to occupy space so that we can set the second episode on it. Right. Or in it. That does concern me about the budgeting if we're going into Stella for the shoot, though. Right. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, what if we just use a fine idea? What if we just use plasticine models? Like that could work. Oh, yeah. That yeah. could work. That's great. Plasticine is great. Okay, I'll think on it. I'll work okay. on it. Uh, okay, the next one is Thank next you. one. Yes. Uh, good luck, Hunt, as well. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Timothy Brent Bench Press. We're ready to pitch to you. Yeah, we're, we've heard of you, Timothy. Timothy, you've got quite a review. In fact, this um, this mystery film noir that you've uh, you've um, told us about in, in your uh, emails is very exciting. It really is. Absolutely. You better uh, make sure your shoes are done up tight because this pitch is going to blow your socks clean off uh, when I tell you all about the case of uh, the arguing lady. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Wow. There's the mark. Yeah, no, I yeah. love Film that. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So, these two ladies are arguing about which one of them is going to be the detective and which one is going to be the victim. That's right, they've made a pact. One of them is going to kill the other and then solve the case. It's going to be a very easy case because they know they did it, but they're going to try and throw themselves off the track with a series of red herrings. Yeah. Uh, wow, I love it. And it passes the Bechdel test, which I love. Absolutely. Will, uh, will the whole series be set uh, outside that in window? In the courtyard or...? Uh, not just this window, a series of windows. Wow, <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So that's and so each week there's a different guest star looking through the window, wondering if they've finished the drink, finished the cigarettes. Right. What are the clues they're trying to solve? A chilling right. twist on the play school model. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it, so I love it. Who are you seeing in the lead roles? Who am I seeing in these roles? Yeah. Obviously, uh, Meryl Streep. Obviously. And I want to say... <laughs> uh, how... Oh, the person that I'm thinking of is... You haven't cast anyone for wow. this. Wow. I, ha I have cast someone for it. I have cast Tina Arena. <laughs> She's versatile. Oh, yeah, child. Unexpected. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. We'll get back to you. It was the Tina Arena thing. I know it. I know it was. <laughs> you. Uh, final pitch. Uh, come on in. Come on in. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay, settle down, everybody. Settle down. This is the third time I am pitching this. Okay? And I'm pitching this to this production company because I know you have a diversity quota to fulfill. Okay? <laughs> now, everybody listen. Okay? This, this... This is the best thing ever, okay? Wow. You want to reach a new demographic? You want to build new audience? This is it! Okay. Yeah. Okay? We do. What was your name? Sorry. <laughs> My name is Marie Josephine. Okay. Yeah, wow. Pretty, pretty. Love that. And so it's a musical. Yeah. Yes, of course it's a musical. It is a musical. <laughs> Um, that is, of course, based on Asian culture because I represent all of Asia. Wow. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, oh, well, that solves a lot. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, okay, uh, why are you laughing? This is cultural, huh? Now, um, this uh, sloppy meat over here, okay? You know, that is a very Western. Uh, Western idea, yeah, just yeah. sloppy meat. 
As Asians, we don't eat sloppy meats, okay? So this musical is about somebody who has to work in a sausage shop making this sloppy meat and then just breaks away from that and starts serving original Asian cuisine in rural Australia, okay? Oh, wow. No. That is a musical. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I just ask, who are you talking yeah. to? Who, uh, oh, all of my people, don't you know? Oh, oh I didn't realize you brought They're all here. The, the <laughs> entire Asian population of Australia wow. here to back me up today. So you better approve this, huh? Okay. Okay? Okay? Oh, look, look, look. Are you single? Uh, Are you single? I have a cousin uh, uh, who's single. Recently married, but... Uh... Oh, you're married? Yeah. Oh, you fix right. yourself, okay. Just threatening, young lady. Um, I'll let you go. I know you've got your 11 o'clock in the... Uh, in a suite with Jobby, and you've got to get, get moving, so I'll, I'll uh, leave you to it. And, uh... Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> it was me all along! <laughs> oh. Oh. Time to play another little game called Don't Tell Luke. Um, <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening closely, I know. So now it is time for you, by round of applause, to cast your vote for what you think was the winning pitch. Was it our mysterious... Who was first? Oh, bet with your amazing... It was the aliens. Aliens versus humans mm. reality show. <laughs> Was it the film noir dark take on Play School? <laughs> yeah, nice one, Jim. Or was it Happy's musical about sloppy meat? <laughs> wow, I think Beck's our winner. Well done. Your next great bingeable show. Congratulations, everybody. Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is time to welcome our guest now. This was them earlier tonight and in their actual life. <laughs> this person... Got is... turned into a car. Oh, no! <gasps> Morris! <laughs> <laughs> they are a well-known television presenter, broadcaster, radio announcer and podcaster, but you know them best from shows like Australian Idol, The Bachelor, and... Many, many others, far too many to mention. Will you please welcome... <laughs> it's Osher Gunsberg! Oh! Yeah. In the toilet? Hey. Sorry. Hey, guys. Hey, mate, thanks hey, for coming. Up. Just next door, too. Yeah, I know. Why don't uh, you just live next door? Why don't I, you... I, look, I know you have a thing for slide nights. It's a bit retro for me. Like, if I'm going to go retro, I prefer Larry and Sylvie's place. That's, they, that's a nice look, house. Look, they have punch bowl parties, but I can't find my keys, so here I am. That's <laughs> right. I appreciate you being... I mean, you have your own... <laughs> and your sorry, own... that first pitch blew my socks off. So. That was... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tell yeah. me. Tell me about this. I don't know. How, how, call, much, how much fun do you want to have? Do you want to have fun? <laughs> Let's go for it. Where are All we? Right there. Where are we here? Are you ready, Benny? Be there. Everybody. I'm nine years old. A year before this, I started going to Weight Watchers. Ah. Oh. Who goes to Weight Watchers at eight? Me. Um, don't worry, I ended up being 112 kilos by the time I was 17. Yeah, how did um, it work? How did it, did it work out okay? Uh, eventually, right? Good, there you eventually. go. Eventually. Um, so I am, uh, I don't know, I'm on holidays with my family. Mm -hmm. At the time, that was uh, essentially that the... the bluey of its time. You couldn't buy anything that didn't have that logo on it. Yeah. Um, my father, uh, he'd, gosh, he'd only been in the country for not even 10 years. Because uh, I'm an immigrant, but I'm white, so no one cares. Uh, <laughs> true. Um, so we're somewhere, I don't know, somewhere between Brisbane and Adelaide. We used to drive that Mitsubishi L300 uh, from Brisbane to Adelaide before any bypasses or anything. And both of my parents were doctors, so... Brisbane to Adelaide? It's a long way. You don't win either end. No. And they were both doctors, so before mobile phones, if some stuff happened on the side of the road, we would stop. Fill the gaps, but the f interestingly, this van went on to become my van. van. The this this van went on to become the family car, and then it became the van that I drove when I was in a band and I played bass in a funk metal band with shorts longer than my father's. And uh, at some point, is this I, a bit? No, okay, it's all true. Okay, but that van that van has also had 
I'm going to say, I won't say his name out loud on stage, but a very famous Australian comedian who has multiple television specials to his name. Right. Um, in the middle, uh, me driving and opening the pod bay doors and just flinging eggs at bystanders. Wow. When we were about All eight. that from one photo. <laughs> That's all we have time for. Usher Gunsberg. Now, mate, I have seen you... Uh, Hosting many, many shows, many, many successful series, like I mentioned Idol, uh, of course, the Bachelor, all, the, all the Bachelor and Bachelorette franchi franchises, yeah. uh, Mars Singer. The one thing I've never seen you do that I think you would be great yeah. is helping to deliver the nightly news. Oh, I'm going to do that dream. now. It's my dream. Let's do some breaking news, oh, everybody. Good. All right, good Bridie, good. Daniel, Nicola, oh, come on up. No, reporter. you're going to be the on-the-spot reporter. Bridie is your anchor. And then we have Daniel and Nicola as well standing by. I will give you uh, three slides to work with. We're going to throw to Osha as our on-the-spot reporter. But where is he on the spot? And what is he reporting? We will know as soon as the slide comes up. Now, I don't want to tell you how TV works, but I'm going to tell you how TV works. <laughs> We're going to count the news in because it's live in five, four, three, two, one. Except here's the catch. This is what they never tell you, right? They don't say the two or the one. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it amongst yourselves. <laughs> but next time you're out counting somewhere, like you just go, oh, look at that. Five, four, three. Someone will go, oh, they must work in television. <laughs> So let's all count down live to the news in five, <coughs> four, three. Good evening, breaking news and hearts. I'm Bridie Connell. Tonight's top story, we're heading straight to an epic bank heist. Something very important has been stolen, not money, but something much more peculiar and much more valuable. Luckily, our financial reporter, Osher Gunsberg, is on the ground. Oh, thanks, he's Bridie. Oh, Osher Gunsberg here. I'm downtown uh, Sydney. Uh, the heist is extraordinary. Uh, the, uh, it's just been ex the, the planning scene was fantastic. The soundtrack was an Elvis song, I think. And um, this kid is currently holed up. Uh, inside the Macquarie Bank in the middle of Martin Place. And I believe you've actually been able to uh, get a microphone into her and we can have a quick chat to her now. Uh, yes, um, my hearing aids are as loud as they can go and I can't hear a thing you're saying, so I really hope I can get more of you through the wedges. So I'm guessing you asked me if I can interview somebody? I sure did. I, I believe that child is with you now. To oh, chat. yeah, brilliant. Um, <laughs> uh, look. Uh, clearly, you have a, a dire need of new gumboots. Why did you need to steal these? Uh, because I have a dire need for new gumboots. Fair call, <laughs> fair call, fair call. Uh, I'm actually quite neglected as a, as a child, so my parents will just buy me things from like Kmart, Target, no designer wear at all. Yeah, Fossies? Fossies? <laughs> Fossies? Yeah. I haven't heard of Fossies. Country Target? Oh, Country Target and Kmart Hub, K-Hub. How good is K-Hub? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> harrowing stuff. Thanks, Osha. We'll move on to our next story now. And I believe we have our sports reporter, Osha Gunsberg, standing by. We've had an amazing announcement from the International Olympic Committee today. A brand new sport has been announced for the next Olympics. Oh, yeah, thanks, Heath Bridie. Osha Ginsberg here. I've said my name. <laughs> I've said my name three times now, but you'll keep us pronouncing it. That's fine, it's television, that's okay. Look, as a proud Brizzo, I'm very, very excited about Brisbane getting the Olympics in 2032. And it's the first time we are going to see uh, competition watering, which I'm absolutely thrilled about. Um, the Olympic judging committee uh, have been speaking with Costa from Gardening Australia, and he has sanctioned fully. Like, how large a zucchini can you grow? Dan's here, uh, renowned for his gigantic zucchinis. That's uh, right. I, um, I like come here in water garden like this, and uh, I've been in practice for many years now, and it's like uh, these are my, uh, uh, my team. We're all watering gardens, aren't we? Uh, uh, look, um, I've, got to, I've got to say, you know, when it, come, when it comes to gigantic vegetables, uh, the, real, the real star of the show, Bridie, is brassicas. And uh, let, me, let me just call with you, like, uh, this is Nick. She's got a grown a competition brassica. You're excited about the Olympic chances? Oh, absolutely I am. I'm going to win the Olympics with the brassica. Yeah? The brassica. 
Yeah, thank you so much, Osha. I haven't understood a word of this single any, anything that's just been said. Right. We've got time for one more story today. And instead of crossing live, we're crossing to the other side of the studio for our weather report. Now, Osha, I believe we're having quite a strange winter. What's going on? Uh, a very, very strange winter. Uh, it's, you know, you know what, Bridie? Uh, I hate to tell you so, but it seems like 250 years of unchecked fossil fuel burning has actually really fucked shit up. And, uh, <laughs> like, this was, uh, <laughs> this was SeaWorld. And, um, <laughs> you know, couple of storm surges and Bob's your own, he's living lover. I would be building a dive site company if I was you because that's the next level tourism on the Golden Coast right there, Bright. It's pretty good. Thank you, Osher. Another illuminating weather report. We'll be back same time tomorrow for news, real or fake, who can tell? <laughs> See nice you later. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Baby. Thank you. Uh, that's actually how I started. Ah. Yeah, I know. In, um, I went to a rugby school in Brisbane, which is no fun because I was the overweight muso who didn't like footy. And, um, uh, oh my God, he's going to blow! Okay, great. Uh, well, it's time for me to look into your future. So, yes, it's sure. It's time for me to look into your future, oh. Osha, and I see a game called Fortune Teller. Uh. Oh, I knew I was going to say that. <laughs> have a how, I'm here. Go, have a seat. Have a seat here, and we'll have uh, Beck. Uh, with Beck, would you like to be the fortune teller? Lovely. I'll have, give Beck three slides to play with in which to tell your future. My future. Have you been to a fortune teller before? Uh, and you know what, we don't have time for the story. Okay, well, let's <laughs> it's a good get back one. in. I'm sure, I have no doubt. You're in it. <laughs> Hi. Oh, hey. Wow, I can tell you're a beautiful person. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I bought a linen shirt, now my aura is just apparently. Oh, your aura is going off. Yeah. It's really She activated great. almonds. Oh, wow. <laughs> Is that what they call it? Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. I just have a feeling that you've got some questions for me and I'm going to answer them. I do, I do. Look, What's all... your first question? My first question is I'm, I'm, I'm currently nominated for a gold Logie. Wow. And, and, and do I have any chance? Oh, I can just feel it. I'm transporting myself to the future, to the Logie ceremony. Oh, so much cocaine and... <laughs> I think your nomination is on a long train to nowhere. <laughs> it's it's hate... interesting. It's it's. It... <laughs> Look, it's been quite a while since I've been on the rails, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually 13 years sober. Um... Sorry. That's fine, because my drinking and using was going to kill me, so that's okay. <laughs> no, that's just the spirit world. All right. Just supporting right, I have, her. I have been so off my face that yeah. um, I was given, I was actually received the Logie for Australian Idol and don't remember touching it. Wow. Yeah. I don't remember anything. You're the fortune teller. You're supposed to know stuff. I just channel it, tell you, and then I just go home and I open a jar of story. <laughs> <laughs> How good's that? I have a feeling that's a second question. Yeah, that absolutely is. I mean, you know, our interest rates keep going. Bear in mind, I have a job in television, so, you know, I, I get paid well, but not for very long at a time. Yeah. So, like 12 weeks or so. Like, and are we going to have to move house? Because it's pretty tight at the Oh, I understand the gig economy. Okay. I'm sensing a structure that's going to contain you. It's going to be amazing. You are going to move. It's somewhere spectacular. Uh? Absolutely spectacular. You are going to end up <laughs> <laughs> living on a lilo. <laughs> How Look, is, is it like the lilos are covered in roses? Is this some sort of horrible joke? That's right. <laughs> is this like when you give Grant Daniel a stool and you go, no, 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 that's, do you need a ladder to get on it? You... That's right. Everything from once... your career is going to come back and haunt you in, men, in materialistic form. Yeah, yeah, my gosh. But don't worry, you're not just going to have one lila, you'll have two. <laughs> Do you know who will be occupying the second Lilo? I have no idea who will. I'll tell you who will be occupying the second Lilo. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> That's
That's right. That's the head of the Reserve Bank right there. Yeah. Yeah. Is the nose large from the lies? Of All the lies. And as you can see, he's really close to the ground. It is. It yeah, is. which helps with a lie lot. Seems well fed. He's so well fed because he doesn't know what it's like to struggle in the gig economy like the rest of us. No. You know, like, I'm not actually getting paid for this, am I? Rove, am I getting paid for this? <laughs> no. Who are, oh, wow, you're talking, wow. The there's spirits voices. say no. No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, that's okay. I'll pay you just for turning up. In cash? Well, no, in sexual favour. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm so close. I was hoping to see that play out, but who knows? All right, we have time for one last game. That was that was eerie. That was so eerie. Yeah. I mean, a train could be on the right track as well. I mean, let's just... It could go both ways. It's fine. All right, we've got one more game to play. It's called Disorder in the Court. Oh. We are about to witness a trial which you, the jury, will consider the final verdict. We'll have one of our teams playing prosecution. The other will be playing defence. Uh, I will play the judge since uh, it's laundry day and I just washed my good wig. <laughs> which means... <laughs> Osher, you are the accused on trial. Is this my... Take your seat. No, this is quite clearly a judge's... <laughs> Do you have a gavel? Of course I have a gavel, mate. You know, it's, it's a bit misshapen, but, you know. Oh. <laughs> it'll do the job. <laughs> All right. So I need you, the jury, to be listening closely to the arguments put to you in the case of the Crown versus Osher Gunsberg <laughs> in the trial where you are <laughs> on trial for the charge... Of changing lanes without indicating. <gasps> which, of course, we all know comes with a sentence of death. <laughs> so listen carefully, because at the end, I will need you to judge and give your verdict. All right. Uh, who would like to be prosecution? Who would like to be defence? Do you want to prosecute? Oh, okay, I'll give you that to get started. I will head into my chambers. I will see you in a bit. <laughs> That we've just blown the budget of the whole show by playing that note. <laughs> we cannot actually afford uh, that. Sorry, boys. All rise! All rise! All rise! The Honourable Roger McDodger presiding! Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for closing my chamber door. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, welcome to my court, where one Osh Kunzberg, if that is your real name, <laughs> you are hereby charged with the most heinous crime of not changing lanes while indicating. How do you plead? Ah, uh, look, I, it really depends on it's how- It's a pretty simple guilty, not guilty answer. I'm not asking you what your favorite TV show is. <laughs> no, it's not guilty. Not guilty. Well, that's helpful, now we can have a trial. Yeah. Counsel for, otherwise, like, I totally have to send you home. It's I, very awkward. Happened last week, the guy just said, uh, I did it, and we went, okay, that's it. Anyway. Counsel for the prosecution. Will you, oh, there you are, hi. Would you like to please give your opening statement? Yes, Your Honor, thank you, Your Honor. You're most welcome. No. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen and everyone else of the jury. This man here stands accused of overtaking without indicating. Objection. Hmm? Changing, it's actually, yes. Changing lanes. It's changing lanes. What did I say? You said overtaking. overtaking. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wait, wait, uh, stenographer, could you please read back that last statement? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was that? I was accused of changing lane. No, I wasn't. Guilty, not guilty. Oh, God, is that what you sound like? How embarrassing. <laughs> oh, 
Anyway, continue. I thought you were the counsel for the defense, not counsel for the pedants. <laughs> Won't ah! sick burn. <laughs> now, the question here is not to who the highway code applies, but to whom highway codes apply. <laughs> here, here. Good recovery, good recovery. Hume Highway. Okay, never mind. But there is a crucial piece of evidence that I would like to point to, which is that this man. <laughs> is not eligible for a driver's license at all. For he is a dog. <laughs> Look at that shaggy crop on top. Uh, that slick, shiny nose. Uh, the lovable family around him. What say you? Are you a dog? Or do you just need pause to think? <laughs> that... That pun was rough. <laughs> <laughs> Objection! I will not have puns thrown willy-nilly in my court of law. I object to Rob McManus objecting to a pun! <laughs> I've seen you, host. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Your Honor, if it Would you like to call your first witness? I would love to call my first witness. Nothing Excellent. would please me more. My witness is... Doreen McCarr. Ah. And Doreen McCarr was driving at the time that this Dog. good little boy was uh, changing Your Honor, she's lanes. blind. She can't see. She shouldn't even be on the road. Doreen, uh, will you please state your name again for the court? D Doreen McCarr. And I swear to tell the truth. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is, that is very helpful, thank you. Doreen, were you or were you not driving your car? Hooning it? Actually, that scratch that, that's gonna look bad for you. Were you or were you not <laughs> driving your car when you saw this adorable hecking little pupper? I was driving my car along the highway, and as a responsible citizen, I always indicate when I'm changing lanes. And then I noticed this one with his puppy dog eyes. But you see, I'm not fooled by cuteness. Mm. I know when there is evil within the cuteness. Evil that he just changes lanes like an entitled dog. Evil on the magnitude of... Oh, oh, well. Of unprotected skin under the hot sun. That's, that's quite the magnitude. Magnitude or magnitude. Or magnitude. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you, Doreen. Council, <laughs> yes, thank you, Doreen. Council, you miss it. Thank you. It's good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Council for the defense. Thank you. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we find ourselves in quite a strange situation. Because I completely agree with the prosecution. What? Oh. Insofar. Objection! Yes? I didn't know there was going to be an insofar. Oh. Sustained. Thank you. Insofar as this man is not a man, but is in fact a dog. Thank you. I also agree with my esteemed colleague, the oh. counsel for the prosecution and his witness, that Tareen Dakar was driving. But what the prosecution have failed to let you, the jury, know, is that this man slash dog was a passenger in Doreen's car. <gasps> I don't think that the jury have gotten on yet to the fact that dogs can and do not drive. <laughs> this whole trial is a sham. Look at this man slash dog here, bare feet, a hippie if ever I saw one. Do you expect this man to own a car, let alone drive one? No, this person was a passenger in somebody else's car. Yes, a hero saving the planet, a hero <laughs> who loves to sit outside in the beautiful backyard because he is, as we have stated many times, a dog. He's out of frame in this picture, but trust me, he's there. Do you have anyone who can give us any testimony to this? I do. Oh, that's good for you. I have a character witness that I would like to call to the stand, please. <clears throat> good. <laughs> State your name for the jury, please. Barry Olfo. Sorry? 
Sorry. Barry also. Barry also. I'm still working on my last name. Fair enough. Mr. Also, could you please state how you know the defendant man slash dog, Osher? He's this really cute little fella that lives in my street and I see him running up and down the road, back and forth, chasing cars. He's a lot of fun, uh, you know, doing turds and the thing, running off again. <laughs> People love him. He brings a really positive energy. And, and Mr. Also, have you ever seen this man slash dog drive a car? I have never seen this man slash dog drive a car or anything else for that matter that could be driven. Food for thought. Now, Mr. Also, I refer you to Exhibit D, which I will let you address, seeing as you took this picture. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I was on uh, my uh, way down the road and with my flock of emu. Um, I'm an emu breeder and we were uh, crossing the road. At the same time, I did see the accused uh, leaning out the window just as the last witness was driving past. The uh, accused was hanging out the window <laughs> like that, trying to indicate that the, the driver was changing lanes, almost striking one of my prized emus, Melba, and wiping us off the road. It was only because of the, the actions, of responsible actions, I must say, of the dog slash person that we were <laughs> saved. And I'm here today, slightly drunk. Ladies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Thanks, the jury, Bye. you've heard it. Mr. Olson. This man slash, slash dog is a very good boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I was there. I'm Melba out. would have been toast. Well. <laughs> Again, puns in my court, sir. You may now give us your closing arguments, please, counsel for the prosecution. Thank you very much, Your Honour. You're my most welcome. I'm a polite judge, though stern. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else of the jury, there is a question here. Why is this being tried in an international court? <laughs> I will tell you why. Because this man slash dog poses a risk. Sure, right now, he is changing lanes without indicating. But you put him in a European car on a rainy day. Uh -huh. He is not going to be using the windscreen wipers either. Here, here. And most crucially, objection class warfare. <laughs> He's, he's trying to paint me as someone who can afford a European car. And therefore, the people will be like, ah, he's hoity-toity. Don't make me put one of those silencing collars on you. <laughs> I kind of like the pain, but sure. <laughs> there is one crucial legal principle that is at play here. It's a legal principle that we call... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, I mean, I am a learned legal mind. I need not have to explain this, but would you please, for the members of the jury, so they may understand this most basic of legal principles. I put it to this defendant. You weren't driving a good car. Aren't you driving a lemon? <laughs> oh, nice save. The prosecution rests. The prosecution rests. And well, you should. It's been a very trying day. <laughs> Counsel for <laughs> the defence, would you please wrap up your case? Certainly, Your Honour. The prosecution may rest, but I hope they do not rest easily. How could they sleep at night? Knowing that instead of celebrating a dog who can talk, <laughs> we have instead berated him in a court of law. This man slash dog is a miracle. And instead of treating him with disdain, we should marvel at the fact that he can talk, that he could potentially even be a passenger, not a driver, but a passenger in a car. I have one final piece of evidence, which I think will leave no shred of doubt in the minds of the jury, that this man sash dog is innocent and a very good, cute boy. <laughs> I believe so much in the purity and kindness and good soul of my client, that I would like to propose. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. I don't, I, look, I don't know, you're a judge. I am. Will you allow it? Conflict of interest. Yes, and. Yes, hurrah. <laughs> I now pronounce you 
uh, dog and dog owner. Hooray! The defense rests! You may now rub the belly of the groom. <laughs> Very well. Have a seat. No, look! No, no, please, have a seat. I think it's frightfully delightful that you are now a married couple of human and dog. Sure, in many places that would be deemed quite weird and inappropriate. But as we have stated, we are in international court <laughs> where anything goes, baby. You have no idea what I'm doing in my chambers. Oh. Or like, like mid I, I'm not on trial here. Nah. But be that as it may that you are now happily married, still you are technically on trial, married or otherwise, yeah. for this heinous crime. So, ladies and I gentlemen... I haven't had a chance to say anything. Do you have any way. closing this statement? This is the kangaroo court. Is there any closing statement you would like to make? I would Remember, like you as a jury to, to, to accept this, like there's an actual, like the reality of quantum physics means that there's such a thing known as a quantum superposition where until you actually realise or observe a situation, it is either in one or the other state at the same time. So if you didn't see me indicating, you just weren't observing at the right time. You were observing at the point where the indicator was off. You look away, you come back, the indicator's off again. It was on, you were just over, like looking over there. Schrodinger's sure defense. Larry's house. Well done, darling. The end. <laughs> well. I call Neil deGrasse Tyson. It is, <laughs> it's very rare for a jury to applaud, but... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it is now time to make your verdict. For it is not for me to judge, although technically that is my title. <laughs> so please, by round of applause, in the case of the entire world, it seems, versus Osher Gunsberg on the charges of indicate, changing lanes without indicating, by round of applause, do you find the defendant guilty? Gee, good God. I mean, it took a while even for the prosecution to applaud. <laughs> Do you find the defendant not guilty? Oh! Well. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Case dismissed. Okay. You may now rub him in that weird spot at the back of his tail, where, which makes his leg go all wonky. We have not signed the release for, Fair enough. for that. <laughs> I haven't been inducted for that. <laughs> well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Oh, it was me all along! Oh, oh what? what? Surprise. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause to Osher Gunsberg! <laughs> that, brings us to the end. Yay! It's me. that brings us to the end of the show. Thanks to all our performers tonight, Nicola Parry. <laughs> And Osher Goldberg. And musically, all night, Benny Davis, Yay! ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming out. We've got two more shows tomorrow. If you enjoyed it, please tell your friends. If you didn't, keep it to yourselves. Good night, go. everybody. I'm Rope and Matter. Say hi to him up for me. Good night. Thank you, Jack. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. If you would, that's right. We'll get, all, we'll get that in the morning. Head to the after party. Take the bins out on the way. On your way out would be great. Good night. But I'm just the background music, so you can ignore this bit. Just stay on your phone. Like the lady in the third row who hasn't paid attention to me. That's fine. I'm amazed that you get signaled down here.